Anyway, um, so I am the physician at Chicago Arthritis. Today I'm talking about treating knee arthritis and injuries with stem cells. So, you know, the goals for today are uh, a few things. Number one, I want to make sure you guys understand that there is a difference between the traditional care of uh, how we treat orthopedic conditions versus the regenerative approach. Um, it's important to understand the regenic difference in treatments. It's also important to understand why stem cells can help with orthopedic conditions and how they help. So knee arthritis is really an epidemic in this country at this point. Um, knee replacement costs, according to the CDC, in 2008 cost $28 billion. By 2030, the estimate is that it could be up to $7 billion. That's really quite extraordinary. Knee arthroscopy, which is one of the most common surgeries in this country as well, costs $4 billion. So really, we're talking about some pretty phenomenal um, costs of care. There's a lot of dangers to this. Um, certainly, there's spiraling costs, but uh, there's other issues. Knee replacement surgery after about 10 to 15 years, um, a need for knee revision surgery is uh, fairly common. That's a pretty big, major surgery and much more complicated. These surgeries do not address the source of the problem, and they're really the wrong approach to most knee issues. Um, an interesting question is, why does my knee hurt? There's the old model, and then there's kind of the newer model of thinking. The old model is still what a lot of physicians think, by the way. There is the structural model, the older model of care, meaning um, there's uh, wearing down the cartilage, and there's uh, quote-unquote bone-on-bone arthritis, and that's what causes pain. What's interesting is that when you actually look um, at imaging for people, anyone above the age of essentially 50, you'll find some degree of arthritis. But not everyone has pain. There's a lot more to what drives pain than just this structural model. So the newer school of thinking is that it's just more complicated. Certainly there's structural issues, but soft tissue supporting tissues such as your tendons and ligaments drive pain as well. There's a neurologic component to pain. And there's even a biochemical component to the fluid that you have in the joint that can drive arthritic pain as well. So it's a lot more complicated. And the typical model of care doesn't really treat this newer school of thinking. So traditional care, everyone knows, rest, take some anti-inflammatories, maybe a steroid injection, maybe physical therapy. If you're not getting better, then eventually surgery. Problems with this traditional care are really multifold. Uh, for starters, medications um, such as anti-inflammatories have potential a lot of problems long term. Steroid injections, besides having a lot of long term issues, can also weaken cartilage and tendon tissue. So the traditional care does not actually fix your problem. It also doesn't really modify your disease process to prevent it from uh, progressing. These are really short term treatments and not meant to really uh, be long term treatments. Surgery is sort of another um, complicated um, set of issues. There are certainly mixed results. Uh, there are a significant number of patients that have a knee replacement who still have persistent pain. Knee meniscus surgery can actually progress the problem of early onset arthritis. Surgical revision surgery, as I mentioned, is complicated. And of course, once you've had tissue either cut out or replaced, you can never go back. The newer paradigm, which is correct your biomechanics. Uh, consider some nutritional and supplement issues as well. We're just learning more about that, about what can help with arthritis pain. And then you use some of these newer autologous biologic treatments. These include platelet-rich plasma and stem cells. These not only treat pain, but they can also be disease modifying, meaning they may have the potential to even prevent the progression of disease. The advantages to regenerative treatments are, first and foremost, they come from yourself. They're autologous. They're limited risk. They have a potential to repair damage. They can be potentially disease modifying. They're certainly healthy for your joints and tendons long term in comparison to steroid injections. And there's no limit to the number of treatments. They take longer to work, but they typically last longer. The Regenix procedures, uh, and I'm a member of the Regenix network, are a series of stem cell and platelet treatments that are used to treat osteoarthritis, tendonitis, and ligament injuries. 
the treatments that we're talking about include the regenic same-day stem cell treatment protocol and platelet-rich plasma or platelet treatments. You know, I joined the Regenix network in early 2012, and the reason why I did was when I looked around to see who's offering the best quality sort of treatments uh, in this biologic world, in, in this autologous biologic world, I realized that this was really the only one to look at. There was nothing else even that compared. The strengths of the network are um, this is a network of physicians around the country using similar and consistent protocols. There's a lot of benefit to learning from each other, publishing results, tracking uh, how people are doing in terms of efficacy and safety, and continuously improving treatments. There's a real focus on quality and safety of treatments uh, within the Regenix network that I don't think you really find elsewhere uh, in this, in this uh, um, uh, newer kind of treatment uh, paradigm. My general approach to these kind of treatments is that for mild conditions, platelet-rich plasma is a good treatment. For more advanced conditions, I think the Regenix same-day stem cell treatment protocol is more appropriate. So amongst the platelet treatments, um, you know, the way PRP or platelets work, essentially when you have an injury, platelets get um, brought into your injured area. They help release a number of growth factors that are typically uh, essential and used to help in repair and healing an injury. So PRP is a process where we take a sample of your own blood, concentrate it into a high concentration of platelets, and then using um, imaging guidance, we inject those platelets directly into the area that's been injured. Um, that creates a very focal inflammation area that kickstarts the normal healing cascade. Uh, it can take about two months to get really ideal benefit from PRP. I generally tell people to expect that it can take anywhere from two to three treatments to obtain best results. As a standalone treatment, it's a good treatment for mild to moderate arthritis, tendonitis, and ligament laxity, and we do combine it with stem cell treatments as well. The data on platelets is pretty good. It's uh, better than viscosupplementation injections for osteoarthritis of the knee. Um, it has similar efficacy compared to surgery for tennis elbow. And it's also been shown to help um, with people who have ankle sprains to quicken their recovery from an injury. So the other kind of big treatment are stem cells. And really, what are stem cells? Essentially, stem cells are a line of cells, a line of cells that we have in all of our tissues. Their purpose is really to help renew uh, and um, uh, refresh and regenerate injured tissue in the body. Uh, their real purpose is that they can help orchestrate um, that repair response. And while there are many different types of stem cells, the mesenchymal stem cells are the ones that are most researched for orthopedic conditions. So the Regenix same day stem cell protocol, uh, a number of things to understand about this. Number one, these are adult stem cells. They're not embryonic, they come from your cell. There's a lot of benefits to coming from yourself uh, in that there's not really any risk of allergic reactions. It's come from your own bone marrow. Uh, and because they are adult stem cells and your own stem cells, there's really no ethical issues in regards to embryonic stem cells. The Regenix same day stem cell treatment protocol is actually a three-part treatment protocol. Um, this protocol has been devised since 2004 and has been revised uh, essentially continuously since that time. So the protocol is three treatments on day one. There's what's called prolotherapy treatment, where we essentially inject sugar water into a joint or tendon that's been injured. The purpose of that is that it helps prep the joint for when it needs to be injected with stem cells later on. Three to seven days later um, is the busiest day of this treatment protocol. You get a blood draw to prepare your own platelet-rich plasma, and you also have a bone marrow aspiration whereupon we concentrate the bone marrow into a high concentration of stem cells. Under precise imaging guidance, using either ultrasound or x-rays, we inject your own cells into that area that needs to be treated. Three to seven days after that, um, you get a post-injection with your own platelets again, where again it's a blood draw, uh, prepping that into high concentration of your own platelets and injecting that into that same joint or tendon. Purpose of that final injection is that it helps to boost the stem cells. Essentially, in the lab setting, the way that you grow stem cells is with your own platelets. So you know, who are the kind of people that we're seeing as patients? 
a wide spectrum of people, anywhere from folks who are active, middle-aged, people who are elderly and active, young athletes, and people who just have a chronically injured joint. Safety is always a key when it comes to these kind of treatments, and as a physician, obviously, safety has to come first. It has to, of course, always be balanced when it comes to efficacy of treatments. What's interesting is that there are three different groups that have looked at safety in large numbers for these kind of treatments. That includes the Regenix Network. It also includes a group out in South Korea and another group in Spain. And the data supports that these procedures are as safe as any other common injection procedures. Again, important to recognize that these are autologous procedures. These come from yourself. And these treatments are compliant with FDA regulations. So how do stem cells work in arthritis and meniscus tears? And arthritis and meniscus tears are really the biggest kind of issues that you see in, in knee problems. But a lot of other kind of soft tissue injuries can be treated with these treatments as well. So for a mild to moderate condition, stem cells can actually help to repair tissue, either on a really macro scale, meaning something you could see on imaging, or even just on a microscopic scale. For more advanced conditions, what's interesting is that the data shows that um, folks can still get significant improvement in regards to pain and function with stem cell treatments. So how is that? Um, meaning, if you cannot get tissue to regrow in an advanced condition, how can you still have improvement in pain and function? This really gets back to that newer model of care when it comes to orthopedic injuries. It's more than structure. There's a lot more involved here. So the way that stem cells work in this case is, number one, they have the ability to influence and improve the cellular environment that they're being injected into. So for example, we know that certain types of cells, cartilage and tendon cells, as they get older, get a little bit worn out. And by that, I mean the normal machinery that helps to keep that cell running, the mitochondria, get a little bit worn down. Stem cells can actually help to refresh that. Uh, stem cells have also been shown to have a stronger and longer lasting anti-inflammatory effect. And when you look within an arthritic joint, you find certain inflammatory chemicals that are associated with arthritic pain. Um, another way that stem cells work in an advanced arthritic joint is it helps to basically correct that sort of biochemical imbalance in the joint. So why do stem cells work? It works on multiple levels. And, and I think it's important for people to understand that, that the outcomes that are most important are more than just imaging. Um, everyone loves to look at their MRIs, and so do physicians. Um, but in, in reality, what we want are patients who, are, have, who have long-lasting improvement in pain and function. Those are, at the end of the day, those are the most important outcomes that, that really matter to people. So does it work? So the data for knee arthritis shows the following. This is the Regenix same-day stem cell protocol. This is over a few thousand patients. Um, what you find is that the average improvement, this is for all comers for knee arthritis, from people who have moderate to more advanced arthritis, at one year is about a 55 to 60 percent improvement at one year. What's curious is that you do find a slight continual uptick as time goes on with these kind of treatments. And again, this is in contrast to, let's say, a steroid injection that works quickly within days and wears off within weeks to months. This is a sort of treatment where I generally gauge outcomes at three to six months. It takes time to improve. And I think combined with healthy changes in terms of lifestyle and biomechanics, um, it's a really, um, it makes more sense and is a good, uh, um, healthier approach to care for orthopedic injuries. Another way to look at this data is what percentage of people get more than 50% improvement. And for the knee treatments, it's about 65% at the one-year mark. In terms of functional improvements, the graph on the right is, is showing um, in terms of improvement regarding function at work, athletic activities, household activities, basic activity to daily living, even basics like walking and climbing stairs. You, again, you see anywhere from a 40 to 60 percent improvement in function as well. The knee meniscus treatment, 
Um, you know, the meniscus is essentially an extension of the cartilage you have in your knee. It's on the outer rim of the knee. Um, one of the most common surgeries in this country is arthroscopic meniscus resection for people who have a torn meniscus. What's curious is that when you remove that meniscus, what happens is that your body now no longer has that same level of cushion to help protect it. Because of that, your knee is at much more stress and will be more prone to developing arthritis within the next five to 10 years. So this meniscus surgery, you have to go into very cautiously. The other thing to keep in mind is that 90% of meniscus surgeries actually cut out tissue instead of actually repairing the tissue. So the vast majority of people who get arthroscopic meniscus surgery are actually really accelerating their arthritic process over the next five to 10 years. Um, there are a number of very large organizations that at this point do not recommend meniscus surgery in the setting of arthritis because it's been shown to be no better than physical therapy alone. So what can we do for meniscus tears um, with these kind of treatments? With the stem cell treatments, um, this is again sort of that similar data. What do we see in terms of improvement of pain, function, and percent improvement? And what you find again at that 12-month mark is that people who've had their meniscus treated with the Virgenic same-day stem cell treatment have about a 50% improvement across the board. And again, if you think about that, um, here's a treatment that does not accelerate the arthritis process. It's a treatment that can give a good deal of pain and improvement in function. Uh, and it's safe for you longer term. It's a healthier process longer term. And that's, that's really, I think, a key takeaway to all this. I will get to everyone's questions towards the end. Um, good. So how, you know, an interesting question that comes up is how does the regenic stem cell treatment compare to a knee replacement? What's interesting is that this has actually been studied. Mitch Scheinkopf, an orthopedic surgeon at Rush here in Chicago, has compared his surgical patients to those patients who receive the regenic stem cell treatment. And what he found was that in terms of pain relief, there was a similar improvement in pain relief. But more than anything else, his stem cell patients had a greater improvement in terms of knee function. Now that makes sense. Um, instead of cutting out the entire joint, which is what knee replacement is, um, he, the, the process of injecting your own stem cells essentially allows you to keep your normal structure, your normal tendons and ligaments, um, and thus, of course, your function will be more improved because you're keeping your normal, um, your, your, your normal processes and, and anatomy intact. So a, a real big difference, while you have similar improvements in terms of pain relief at, at the, at the one-year mark, you have a better improvement in function with the Regenix stem cell treatment protocol. Do the second stem cell procedure help? And the answer is yes. Uh, when it comes to the knee, um, getting a second treatment at around the, anywhere from the six to 12 month mark can result in another 20 to 25% improvement from where your original treatment gave you relief. Again, emphasizing that these treatments, because they come from yourself um, and because they're low risk, um, they are generally healthy for the joint. In fact, when you start thinking about what is the future of orthopedic care going to be, that traditional model of care where we tell people, here, just rest, take an anti-inflammatory and a steroid injection, and just wish for the best, um, that won't be the case in the future. In the future, um, and really even right now, the, the better approach is, well, let's, uh, let's correct your, your uh, existing biomechanical problem. Let's use these biologic treatments to help uh, prevent your problem from getting worse. And um, you know, let's continue to keep the knee healthy as long as we can. So what makes a good versus a bad candidate? Some general kind of ideas. A bad candidate, in my, in my opinion, is someone who has multiple active medical problems. That would make them um, possibly someone who wouldn't heal well on their own. Someone who's taking some very strong anti-inflammatory drugs and is unable to get off them. And 
And, and the reason for that is because that can actually block the effectiveness of these kind of treatments. And so on, quite frankly, is unrealistic goals. If your goal is, can I take can I take my knee and make it look like it was when I was 20 years old, that's, that's a real unrealistic expectation, and, and there's nothing that can really do that. If the goals are, can I improve in a fashion and reduce pain and improve function to stay healthy and to do so in a reasonable um, expected uh, uh, degree, then, then I think that's a much more reasonable goal. Interesting, when we look at people who are good candidates, um, when it comes to the knee, one thought was that excessive weight and elderly age could make people bad candidates, but it turns out when we actually look at the data, um, being obese and being elderly does not actually prevent you from um, getting good benefit in regards to pain relief and functional improvement. Now, of course, I would recommend if, if someone is overweight that they try to lose weight. That's probably healthy as well. But strictly speaking from the stem cell treatment, um, people can still get excellent uh, response to treatment. I think using less medications for these kind of treatments is generally a good thing. And we routinely try to recommend to people to try to minimize some of their medications uh, during the time of their treatment to help prevent any um, impairment of what we're trying to achieve. And of course, focusing on appropriate long-term improvement um, goals, including reduction of pain and function. And then lastly, there, there's always that X factor about motivation and how much somebody wants to get better. Um, clearly, the more motivated somebody is to get better and the harder they're going to work at physical therapy and making nutritional and lifestyle changes, that's all great stuff. And I think that's another aspect of uh, what makes somebody a good candidate as well. So I listed on this slide two examples of people, um, of examples of people who can benefit from treatment, and these are both patients of mine, and and they're different, and and they're they're they had similar good responses, um, and, and I'll explain why. The first is a 50 year old man who's been a competitive swimmer. Uh, he's still trying to stay very physically active in terms of swimming and playing tennis. Uh, he's still active, but he's having pain in his elbow and his knee. And he's really looking to improve his pain and maintain his function long term. It's a pretty common individual that we see. Um, so what he received was platelet plasma for his tennis elbow, and he received stem cells for his left knee. He had a great response. He was able to reduce his pain to a level where he was not requiring regular pain medications. He was able to continue his high level of physical activity, and the amount of uh, health benefits prophylactically to that are tremendous. In, in his case, I would say that was a great response. The second example uh, is, is of a 77-year-old woman who has advanced knee arthritis. She's able to walk half a mile with a cane, but she's limited, um, and she has limited other medical problems. Her goals um, are very um, realistic. Her goals are that she wants to be able to walk up to a mile with her daughter um, more comfortably. So she's a, she's a very motivated um, person who's willing to participate in post-treatment physical therapy, and she received the Regenix same-day stem cell treatment protocol for both knees, and she's able to walk better than she was before. This is not someone who's going to be running marathons, but her goals were very realistic, and she was able to achieve them. And in my opinion, I would say she's had a really great response because she's able she's been able to reduce the amount of pain medication she's requiring, she's able to function at a quality of life that she's happy with, and she's able to do so with less pain. Common concerns that I hear from patients in general, not, not just for people who are coming in asking about these kinds of treatments, but what I'm told is the following. Number one, it's very frequent people are told that they have bone-on-bone -bone arthritis. Again, I keep on emphasizing there's that old structural model of care, and then there's a more modern, sort of new school model for understanding what causes pain in an arthritic joint. That term, bone-on-bone -bone arthritis, that is, that is the old school model of care, and, and it limits what people think they have available. Um, I see people all the time who tell, that, who tell me that they've been told that only surgery, that they've been told that only surgery will help with their knee arthritis. Again, completely incorrect. If you haven't at least explored some of the non-surgical options, then you're limiting your, your potential to improve. Um, and then people always say, well, I've been told by another doctor that these treatments don't work. If you look at the data that's available, the results are realistic and, and they're not new. 
Um, this has been going on since about 2000, 2000, 2004, 2006, and the results are reasonable, and and they're what you what you would expect. So these are not pie in the sky results. These are not um, false hope, false hope hopes. These are um, reasonable expectations, and and they can legitimately offer people um, significant benefit for their arthritic process. So some take home points. There are better and healthier ways to treat arthritis and tendonitis. I think the ideal way to treat arthritis or tendonitis in a non-surgical approach is to use some of these regenerative treatments and changing biomechanics and then throwing in some of the newer concepts of nutrition and supplements as well. The science behind these, behind stem cells is changing very rapidly and uh, improving. The things that I would recommend you consider when you pursue this kind of treatment Make sure you go with a place that really has a proven track record that's using protocols that are being used in thousands of patients, not just sort of uh, on an ad hoc basis. Imaging guidance um, is really essential for these kind of treatments. You should never be getting these kind of injections in a blind manner. Um, all of these treatments from your physician should be given either using ultrasound or x-ray guidance. Um, this is the kind of treatment that needs to be placed precisely not just in the general area. Uh, again, you want to use treatments and protocols that have published results. And I think it's just an exciting field right now. It's changing. And I think you want to uh, really go with uh, clinics that offer the newest and most innovative treatments in the safest manner. <laughs> to learn more about um, some of the results and outcome data, um, you can go to my website, chicagoarthritis.com forward slash results and you can see more results in terms of what we're actually seeing and what's being published. Okay. So I'm going to look through some questions right now if I can figure out how to use this. By the way, thank you everyone for um, being patient at the start of this. Um, we will actually get this um, cleaned up and put it up on our uh, website so that if you want to rewatch it, um, you'll be able to watch it without that 10 minute pause in the beginning. There we go. Okay. All right, so some questions. So all right, so a couple of questions regarding cost. Um, in terms of cost, it really depends on what treatment you're getting and what protocol you're getting. Um, if you want an estimate of cost, um, just email my office at um, admin at chicagoarthritis.com. That can be found directly on my website. So somebody asked, uh, is what we're talking about today, can that be applied to hips as well? And the answer is yes and no. Uh, the general concepts are correct. Hips are a little bit different than knees uh, in that uh, the things that make somebody a worse candidate, um, if you have really poor range of motion in the hips, that can make that a little bit difficult. People can still respond to treatment. Um, but um, but uh, what actually, um, in terms of actual results of hip, hip arthritis treatments, uh, there are some negative prognostic factors, including really poor range of motion. So another question, interesting question, what actually causes arthritis? It's a complicated question. I, I, I think there's multiple things. Um, there's certainly um, the idea of uh, um, weakness of the uh, surrounding uh, support structures. There's certainly traumatic um, injuries that can predispose people to arthritis. Um, but again, what causes arthritis pain, if, if that's the question, I think that's more of a biochemical and neurologic kind of issue rather than strictly, um, rather than strictly structure. All right, so somebody asked, do stem cells always go with PRP or can you do PRP alone? 
Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I mean, it, again, it, in my mind, it depends on the severity of the condition. I think there's some people who do fine with just PRP, the, the platelet treatment, but other people who really need that combination. So um, PRP is a great standalone treatment on its own, but I think it depends on the, uh, the degree of the issue. Um, and it looks like this person was specifically asking about tendon problems. And um, actually, PRP is a great treatment for tendon problems. Um, if the tendon problem is really severe, then sometimes stem cells are a better way to go. Another question about physical therapy, um, doing it before or after, th or, or after treatment. And uh, you know, there's no downside to doing it before treatment, but uh, I think after treatment is helpful. Uh, in general, um, when it comes to people, um, uh, their sort of activity after these treatments, we do have a fairly um, uh, strong set of recommendations of how we like to proceed people through their, um, through their um, resumption of activity. And, and physical therapy is sometimes very helpful in that regard. All right, so somebody asked, how do stem cells differ from other injections in regards to the precision and placement? Um, right, so great question. If you're injecting something like steroids, steroids are what's called fat soluble. And what that means is that anywhere you have fat, that steroid will leach into. So because of that, if you're anywhere close to the, to the joint that needs to be treated, a steroid injection will get to that area. Um, when you're injecting cells, either stem cells or platelets, it's a very different, um, it's, it's a very, very different uh, concept. In that case, you need to be very precise. Um, I, 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 happen to be this, I happen to be someone that believes that you should be precise regardless of what you're injecting, especially if you have that technology available. Um, but I think in particular, when you're injecting cells, I think you need to be really dead on. Um, if, you're, if you're off by even a couple millimeters, um, you're missing the area that you need to treat. So I, I think stem cells and, and uh, um, and platelets are a very different deal than, uh, than, than steroid injections. Other questions? No, so they, they do not dissipate the way other, other uh, solutions do that, that, that are injected. A absolutely not. Um, if, if, you, if you inject your own cells, let's say, into a, uh, an, an, an area of fat, that will not naturally leach into the joint. Um, you need to place that directly into, not only into the joint, you want to place it directly into, um, into the area that you want to treat. So if you know somebody has arthritis in one particular part of their joint, you want to hit that specific spot. You don't want to aim for a different part of the joint. You don't want to aim for outside the joint. You really want to be in that exact same spot. Um, if, if you're not, you're not going to hit the right target. So. A couple of questions regarding insurance coverage for these treatments. You know, at this point, the only part that insurance covers is initial evaluation, imaging, follow-up appointments, but they do not cover um, treatment for um, the, the actual treatment costs at this point. The treatments are too new. Um, they don't have an assigned um, procedure code associated with them. It, it is certainly less costly than replacements, um, but um, Sometimes medicine is, uh, is, is a little bit confounding, uh, the business of medicine. It, it doesn't always make sense. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you thought about this um, holistically and long term, um, you would probably say, um, why, not, uh, why not focus on these kind of treatments, um, uh, not only before people had uh, advanced arthritis, but even when they had their initial injury or initial mild pains, why not prevent that from getting worse? Um, that, that would be the sensible way to approach it. Um, for those of us who are in the Regenics Network, quite frankly, that's how we approach our own care, meaning treat it um, early, treat it prophylactically, treat it before it becomes a lot worse. Um, if that's what I would offer myself or my family or, or a colleague, then to me that's the right way to treat um, anyone else as well.
Great. Well, if there's no other questions, thank you everybody for your time. And again, thank you for your patience at the beginning of this talk. Um, you can always call or email uh, if you'd like uh, more information or if you'd like to be evaluated. Um, have a good day and have a good afternoon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.